Hey guys, it's Erin. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to make some basic laminated cash envelopes that are super easy to make and take no time at all. So in my latest cash envelope stuffing video, I got a question on how I make my envelopes. And the style of mine is probably the most basic that you can make. And this is an example, and let me get out a couple more just so you can see them. Here's one. All of these are from the LOL paper pack from Hobby Lobby, which I absolutely love. I love the patterns. And so what I did was create the envelope and then I used a little tab at the top. Now you can use whatever kind of tab you want or you can put a tab underneath the lamination so you can write over it again and again with a dry erase marker or anything else of your choosing. If you're new to this or if you're just looking for a basic system, this one works really well and like I said, it couldn't be easier. So first what I do is choose the paper. Secondly, I get my laminator ready. So if you already have a laminator, that's awesome. Um, if you don't, I'm going to link a Scotch laminator in the description box along with some laminating pouches just in case you're just getting started. Hit the on button. You can choose three mil or five mil, and that depends on the thickness of your laminating pouches. Now the laminating pouches I have are three mil, but I am choosing a five mil, and it's gonna warm up because I'm feeding in a folded piece of paper and I'll get to that. So even though my laminating pouches are only three mil weight, I'm going to choose five mil just to make sure that it's extra sturdy. Let's talk about your paper choice. Now this LOL paper pack, it's just like a heavier weight paper. This one here, this textiles is really, really thin paper. However, that doesn't matter. You can use cardstock and that's great. Your envelope will be extra durable in, in some instances, but you're laminating it and the strength of your envelope is basically coming from the lamination. I'm gonna make three envelopes because I find that in my laminating pouches, I can make three envelopes at a time. So here are the three sheets that I've chosen. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how I cut them to size and what the exact measurements will be. So you're going to need a paper cutter like this or you're going to need a ruler to measure and a pair of scissors. I want to cut my paper to seven inches wide so I'm going to cut this down from eight and a half by eleven to a straight seven. Now this is um, these are the measurements that I use for my envelopes. I know some people have them a little bit more exact like 7.1 or seven and a quarter or six and three eighths but this is the way i do it and it works really just fine for me and these also fit in my wallet so i'm going to do seven inches by six and a half so i'm going to line that up right there so i'm going to turn this to the longest side and i'm going to fold this Make a nice crease so you have seven inches this way now you have three and a quarter that way so I'm going to show you what a $10 bill looks like inside and that might look like there's a lot of excess space but once you have this laminated and you even trim the top a little bit it's really quite perfect especially since take for instance this envelope it's not like you can open it up all the way like you are with this. Let's go ahead and cut the rest of the paper to the same size. our three cash envelopes and these are coming to life very quickly and what I wanted to mention is you know make sure that you have your bottom crease facing downward and all facing the same direction so here's my laminating pouch and I'm going to open this up all the way guys if you have any questions about this leave them down in the comments because I'm gonna do a follow-up video and show you how I make some with labels. So I'm gonna tuck this 
all the way down. So as far as I can. So you can see there's just a little bit of excess here. And then I'm gonna use that as a guide for the rest. Now some people try to line these up perfectly on the edges so they don't have to do quite as much cutting. I'm not that particular. I don't mind cutting. Plus, I think lining them up perfectly along the edges takes more patience and effort than just doing it at the end. So here are my sheets, or here are my envelopes in my sheet. So I'm gonna turn the laminator around and show you how I feed it through. The laminator is ready to go, the blue light is on. It does get quite hot and toasty, so just make sure if you're moving it around that you are careful. So I just wanna make one tiny adjustment. And like I said, make sure your first envelope is pushed down and it's pushed down straight. So I'm just making sure. And if your other one's a bit shift around, before you get it in the laminator, like I said, don't worry too much about that because you're gonna cut this down. So I'm gonna start feeding this in slowly because you don't get two chances with this. If you start feeding it in and you mess up, don't pull it back out because your sheet has already been compromised. So as you can see at this point, or maybe, you, yeah, it's now feeding on its own. I'm just holding it at the end as like a secondary guide. I'm not pushing it or pulling it. And this is going through quite nicely. And they're so, it's so satisfying to do these. They're so nice when they're all finished. So I'm going to back this up just a bit so you can see everything. Now at this point, I think this is where um, some people, before they start making these, might have the question, okay, you just laminated the whole thing shut. So that's where perfecting trimming is going to come in. And you're going to make these an actual usable envelope. When these come out, some of them may not be lined up perfectly because, you know, they shift. So go ahead and cut them apart first. Just make sure when you do that, you don't cut too close to the bottom here. So this is your bottom, so you don't wanna to cut too close to that. If anything, cut closer to the top of the next one because you're gonna trim that straight anyway. All right, so you have three separate envelopes to work with. So now what you wanna do is put this into your cutter or use your scissors and make sure that you cut close to the edge, but not to the edge. You want to have some left over here so this stays sealed. So as you can see here on this one that I already made, you have some excess all the way around except the top. This is what's going to keep your envelope sealed. If you get too close to the paper, this is gonna pop open. It's gonna come unsealed really quickly. So go ahead and leave yourself like at least, at least an eighth of an inch. All right, so you can see here, this is how much I left. Now you don't have to leave quite that much, but err on the side of leaving too much at first because you can always trim these down a bit more later. So take the plastic out of there. Make sure you're using the right edge also. You just wanna clean these up. You don't necessarily want to make them, you know, anything too much or cut them down too small. Now again, the only time you have to be really precise about your measurements and how big you want these to be is if you are trying to fit these into a very specifically sized wallet. And in that case, you wanna make sure that these not only hold your cash, but they also fit inside whatever wallet you'll be carrying them in. Now, personally, I don't mind carrying these, you know, on their own. So here's where you're going to open up your envelope. This is the top. 
I know that because I can feel this is where the fold is. It's a little bit thicker. So you wanna take off about an eighth of an inch right into the paper. So here's where you want to actually cut into the paper and compromise that seal. Make sure everything is straight. And here's your envelope. So there you go. And that is your new ready to go, ready for cash envelope. So you're gonna put your $10 bill in here, whatever you have. You can see it fits quite nicely. I can open this up quite a bit. It's not pulling or tearing and your cash is ready to go. It's not going to fall out no matter what I do. This is pretty secure because it is such a tight lamination. There's no gusset to it. So literally it is just a matter of a folded piece of paper. And as you can see, these are just fine. This is cardstock and this is not. This is a thin piece of paper and these work exactly the same. So it just depends on what you have. Shop your stash, you know, don't go ahead and buy new paper for these. Don't buy a paper cutter for these. Use scissors if you need to. And honestly, if you don't have a laminator and you just want to fold paper into this envelope size and then affix washi tape on the sides, except for the top, you can do that. Now it's not going to be quite as durable as a laminated piece, but still you can make it work and you don't have to spend money to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish trimming the other envelopes and I'll show you what they all look like. So that's the finished product. We have one envelope that opens. We have the second envelope that opens. And we have the third envelope that opens with our $10 bill. Not very um, complicated and you can use whatever you have on hand to make these. If you guys do want me to make you a set, let me know in the comments or contact me on Instagram. I will do six of these for $6 shipped. I'm not trying to make a business out of this, but in case you don't have a laminator and you're looking for something fairly you know, cost effect trick that I wanted to talk to you about is these scraps that you have if you have made your own. So all you want to do basically is cut this down, you know, maybe to cut it in half and then cut it like that or like that. And then on the back, you can use this as a little register. So you can write down how much money you started out stuffing your envelopes with. And then every time you take some money out of here and um, use it to buy something, you can make a little notation on here. And that way you know at the end of the week what you spent your money on. And I think that's a really great way to keep track of things. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And as always, I hope that you stay tuned for my next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.